that live, I have been doing a lot of thinking. When I talk about Scientology, it's good for me. It's very healing because it gets me thinking. You guys know me. I dig, I dig, and I overthink, and I dig, and I go down rabbit holes. And so I've been thinking about this, this, this specific children's confessional. Check this out. It says right here, security check children. Children's confessional, security check children. See that? Insane, right? This is the list of the confessional. I'm not trying to bum everybody out, but this is pertains to my life a lot as far as like, whoa, it makes me think of why I am the way I am. So here's, here's, uh, starts the confessional, all the list of questions, another list of questions. This is for, oh, by the way, I need to show you one part of it and the rest of the questions. So we're looking at four pages of a confessional for children. Look what it says. What does that say right there? Ages six to 12, six to 12 people. How many questions witness? I don't know, at least probably a hundred, if not a little more. Oh, way more actually. I would say there's 50 per page. 200, I would guess questions. Yep, Bex, ages six. There are tons of kids in Scientology. I'm going to read because it looks like some of you may not have seen that last live. I know, Layla Bradley. I'm going to read some of these questions aloud. And then I want you to remember, I had this list run on me. Okay. More than once I had this list run on me. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to read a few random ones. What has somebody told you not to tell? Have you ever decided you did not like some member of your family? Have you ever taken something belonging to somebody else and never given it back? Have you ever pretended to be sick or ill? Have you ever made yourself sick or ill or hurt yourself to make somebody sorry? Six-year-olds, dude. Have you ever gotten yourself dirty on purpose? Have you ever refused to eat just to worry someone? Have you ever refused to obey an order from someone you should obey? Whoa. Love you, Rain. Oh, I thought you were leaving, Rain. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's insane. Have you ever deliberately got another child or a grown up into trouble? Have you ever broken something belonging to someone else? Do you have a secret? Have you ever noticed something wrong with your body that you were afraid to tell anybody about? Have you ever done anything you were very much ashamed of? Is there anything about your parents you could not understand? Even if you told them? Have you ever spoiled things for somebody? Who have you ever made guilty? Six-year-olds, six years old. Have you ever, oh, this is creepy. Have you ever done something you shouldn't when you were supposed to be in bed or asleep? Have you ever told others bad stories about someone? This is weird. Have you ever felt that your parents and home were too good for you? Have you ever felt that your parents and home were too good for you? Way to strip somebody's confidence, by the way. Have, oh, here's the opposite question. Have you ever felt that your parents and home weren't good enough for you? That's cool. So ask that question and then ask it in the opposite and reverse, which Scientology does that a lot. Is there anything you should tell your parents and never have? Have you ever done something to your body that you shouldn't have? Have you ever done anything to someone else's body that you shouldn't have? How do you ask that of a six-year-old child? 
So this is SEC checking. This is security checking and it says it right here. I'll show it again because it's very important right there. Security check children right there. Uh, I can't see right there. Security check children. And then it says ages six to 12. Have you ever felt ashamed of your parents? Have you ever disappointed your parents? Have you ever not told the whole truth about something so as to protect someone? Oh, I love this one. Look at this top question. Have you ever been a coward? A six-year-old. Have you ever been a coward? Is that an appropriate question for a six-year-old? Have you ever been a coward? What six-year-old isn't afraid of things? Have you ever made too much fuss over a little hurt? This is weird. Have you ever tried to make your parents believe you were doing better in school than you were? Have you ever told on anyone? Have you ever teased younger children? Have you ever let someone else get punished for something you did? Have you ever cried till you got your own way? I can stop you guys, but I wanted to really give you a taste of this. Um, this is creepy. Have you ever spied on anyone? Have you ever spied on anyone? Really? Have you ever been in places where your parents didn't want you to go? This is a weird one. How many times did you have to go through this? Um, probably at least three. I would think, I know I went through it in this when I was in the Sea Org as a child. Um, so I was seven. I don't know if I got this list particular in particular when I was six, there's way more than this, by the way, guys, this is just one. Um, yes, yes. Mark Hardman. My father did the children's confessional at home before I was six. Yes. My father would ask me these questions at home when I was five. So, um, um, Listen to this. Have you ever made a mess and not helped clean it up? This is a weird one. Have you ever done anything wrong according to your own religion? Have you ever not understood why someone was angry with you? Have you ever broken up a friendship? Have you ever thought someone was crazy? So we can stop with that. I wanted to give you a good, uh, my father is more than a creep. That's an understatement. We can stop there with those, but I want to go into the more important part of this, which is it really gave me some insight about myself. This is another one of Fred's gifts, you guys. This is kind of a gift because it helps me to step outside of where I was because I'm not there anymore and really see why we're breaking down today this really messed up human being that is me. And I mean messed up as far as like all my weird hangups. You guys know them. I come out every day and I'm like, this is ugly. I hate my face. My teeth are ugly. I don't have any confidence. I can't do anything. I'm not smart. Hello. I feel like that has everything to do with it. You just stripped that kid's confidence in every way. Can you imagine putting a six-year-old on those cans in a confessional and going, have you ever been a coward? Are you keeping a secret? Are you guilty? And then guess what happens? I said this before earlier today. They'll run that list, which may or may not, I don't know how long it will take. I would guess that list would take at least an hour to go through. Depending on how many reads you get, the auditor gets, they will reassess the entire list. You're not done. That will take several hours. And so you start at the age of six doing that and you take somebody like me and you do that until they're 38. That's all I've ever done in Scientology, guys, is questions. I've got, <laughs> it's called running a list. Um, how do you have any self-confidence after that? You don't. And 
it's insane. And, and I've been subjected to that for a long time, decades. So, um, yeah, this would have screwed up my daughter horribly. You are doing amazing with how much you have been through. I don't know how any child survives that. Well, it's probably Leslie girl, because we don't know anything else. I mean, you survive it because that's all we know. I mean, it's not like I knew the grass was green or anywhere else. So it's just shocking to me when I think about the earliest memory I have of running that list, which I think, honestly, my memory of it was when I was seven in the Sea Org. I know I had not, I, that list I remember. The list I had before that, I swear, I think I was five. It was the year I got Butch, my stuffed animal, and I'm pretty sure I was five. And my dad ran a list on me, and that was the list that said, do you like to little boys? Do you like to have with dogs, things like that. I don't want to demonetize myself. That was the list I got when I was even younger. So fast forward to 10 years old, 12 years old, 14, I joined staff. My whole life in Scientology was being put on the cans and assessing a list. You're always assessing a list. Thank you, Cario One. Huxley never had this list, ever. I never let him near that list, ever. Yes, info dump truck. Yes. So that's all I've done for 38 years is have lists after list after list run on me. And it makes total sense. Not 100%. I shouldn't say it makes total sense, but I'm unraveling a little bit. Yes, it is info dump truck. It is on the list. Yes. Um, no longer a Scientologist yarn prepper, no. Did LRH have a dog? Uh, I think he did. Yes. Um, oh, that's so nice, original Anne. Seriously, dear Reese, you are more than a survivor. Thank God you're on the board of the SPD Foundation. Thank you for saying that. It's very kind of you to say. Um. I know rain virus, me too. It is full on child abuse. But the point is, then you get a girl like me. After all the questions, what happens? Okay, so let's say, let's. I'm going to be the auditor. I feel like I have to blow my nose again. Just hold on. Nothing really happened. Um. So I'm going to be the auditor for a minute and you're, you guys are going to be in session with me. So I'm going to say, have you ever been a coward? And I'm looking at the meter and I'm looking at you. And let's say we just did 15 questions before that. And we get to, have you ever been a coward? And that finally gives me a read. Okay. So I'm holding the, the cans. Okay, big. I'm holding the cans and the auditor is going to go, have you ever been a coward? and they're writing and they see that it reads and they look at you and they go, have you ever been a coward? And first of all, the kid's probably gonna have to clear the word coward because my guess is they don't even know what it means. So you clear the word. And then now that I know what it means, I'm gonna go, I don't think so. I'm six years old. Nah, I don't think so. I'm pretty brave. I understand. I'll repeat the auditing command. Have you ever been a coward? Well, you know, there was one time that somebody tried to take my lunch money, but um, I got it back. And so, no, I'm not a coward. Understood. I'll repeat the auditing command. Have you ever been a coward? The reason is because I'm going to get an answer out of you. It read. The question read on the meter. So it is an absolute yes. I'm not going to take your no for an answer. The meter is, knows more than you do. Okay. So if the meter read, I'm not going to take your answer. I'm going to take that. So then the auditor is going to poke and prod and go, well, look around for a minute. Take a look there and see what, what did you think of when you, when, when I asked you the question, I don't know. Okay. Well, let's take a look around. Let's just fish around and see what we can find. Okay. So now I'm going to start thinking for a minute instead of answering the question. And obviously I'm going to think of something because the needle is going to do this. And the auditor is going to go that right there. They're going to use the needle as the guide. And then they're going to go that right there, right there. What are you thinking of that, that right there? What are you looking at right there? 
So they're using that as a tool. And I'm going to go, oh, well, this one time um, my sister freaked me out and I was hiding in a closet. Okay. Tell me more about that. Well, we were fighting and she's bigger than me and I got really scared and my mom wasn't home and I hid in a closet. Okay. So then I'm going to go down the list of who missed it. My sister. All right. What did she do to make you wonder whether or not she knew? Well, she was walking around the house going, Reese, Reese. Good. What else did she do to make you wonder whether or not she knew? Um, well, she told my mom. All right. What else did she do to make you wonder whether or not she... So, so, yeah, so we have to go through all those questions, right? So then we finally get down to the end of this one from me hiding in a closet. And then if my needle doesn't float, that means there's more to this or there's something before it. So then my needle doesn't float. So now we're going to spend another hour going... Was there an early, earlier similar time that you were a coward? So then I got to find something else. Okay, yeah, there was a time blah, blah, blah at school. Good. Time, place, form, and event. So we're going to go down the list of that time at school. And if my needle doesn't float, was there an earlier similar time that you were a coward? I can't think of anything else. Well, let's go before this lifetime, six-year-old. We're not getting off that easy. So then I got to go past life. No joke. So we finally clear that up. Let's say I finally get it off from a past life. Okay. Good. Your needle floated on that. You think you're done with this? We're not done. So now we're going to go down the list of, we're going to go back to the original list of the questions. You're not done. You've got another couple hours to go. So then we're going to find another question that reads, was there a time you did something to your body that you shouldn't have? Hey, true to it. So now we're going to go, that one reads, was there a time that you did something to your body that you shouldn't have? Not that I remember. All right. I'll repeat the auditing command. Was there a time that you did something to your body that you shouldn't have? So then we're going to go through all this again. And then I'm going to go, yeah, my dad told me not to write on myself, but I wrote on myself. Okay. What did he do to make you wonder whether or not he knew? Well, he yelled at me. Okay, good. What else did he do to make you wonder whether or not he knew? Um, well, he did this and that. Okay. Who missed it? It's a nightmare. And that has been, I'm not trying to sound like a victim here. That's been my entire existence in Scientology. So when I don't have any boundaries with you guys, or I don't mind talking about myself, that's because I've held those cans for thousands of hours, getting off everything you could possibly imagine ever. This life, last life, I don't care ever. Every single thing has been lifted up with a flashlight shine under it. Every single thing I've ever done has been exposed into the open, written up, had reports written on me. I've been sent to ethics. I've been sent to the CS. Everything you can imagine, I've done. So that's one of the reasons probably that I don't have a lot of feeling for things. And I know we talked about this last night, but it helps me to explain it. I love this kind of new thing we're doing on my channel. I think we're getting into the depths and the healing of the Scientology stuff. And I started this channel in August. And if you've got, you guys have noticed... I don't really go there. I kind of skate on the surface of it. I don't, I'm like, it's, it's awful. It's, you know, it's no one wants to listen to this. Well, now we're kind of getting into the, the guts of it and I'm enjoying it. Um, not in a sick way. I mean, I, I'm feeling lighter about it. Like the more we tackle, the more I feel good about myself, the more I feel like I learned something new about myself. And so I'm really enjoying this. I'm really enjoying talking with you guys about it because I think talking it out too, as hard as this is, I said this earlier, it pulls back the curtain on Scientology. There's no more mystery. When I expose this stuff to you guys, you go, oh, that's how it's done. Oh, we get to see it actually from him. Oh, we hear Reese's story connected to what happened here. I think it helps. So it's not such a mystery anymore. Doesn't make it any less sad because there's a lot of that. Thank you, Katie. 
but I'm telling you right now, it is absolute. If I can, um, thank you, original Anne. If I could imagine, I kind of imagine when Tommy talks about when he did solitary confinement. Thank you, Kat. Um, thank you, old boy. Um, I don't really know how to explain what makes the needle float or move. It's through the electrodes and it's based on thought. It's it's like Tommy says, it's a cheap uh, lie detector. Reese, thank you for being you and for sharing the hard stuff. Barefoot April, thank you for saying that. And you're welcome. And thank you for your super chat. Thanks, Chow Yun Smut. Um, I think I just also am realizing I've got quite a bit of knowledge on this stuff and uh, I'm not putting it to good use. I don't ever talk about this stuff ever, but I've got a lot that I could talk about and I'm sure that they don't want me to talk about it, but you know, and I don't want to do it every day. Um, but I, I definitely think it needs to be exposed more. I think I need to do it more. And I hope that that's a, a, a place you guys will go with me on. I hope none of you leave me because you don't want to hear about this stuff. I definitely don't want to make it, like I said, full time that way, but I think it's, um, yeah, Amanda knows it's true. I think it's it's going, here's the thing. This could be helping somebody because when you know, you know, like Amanda, Amanda right here was a Scientologist. She knows, she knows exactly. She said, I concurred everything she just said is true and correct. She was a Scientologist. And thank you, Bex. And um, what about the people? There's 505 people in here right now. What about the people who uh, may be under the radar I'm speaking their language right now. They know exactly what I'm talking about and they've had it done to them. They could relate entirely to what I'm saying. That means something. Thank you, Sin K. Um, what if a child has a panic attack or breaks down during this? Uh, it doesn't matter. We're trained for that. So that's, that's what I mean. That's what we were talking about. Um, Road, I was born into it. No, sassy, no. Um, so that's what I was talking about the other day with Tommy, when Tommy and I were talking about boundaries and my therapist and I were talking about boundaries and my therapist said, you realize, um, you cross boundaries with people. And I was like, really? And he was like, yeah, you do it in here. Yeah. That's exactly why that answers your question right there. What if a child has, um, a breakdown? That doesn't matter. We don't want to hear your excuses. We want results and we're going to get those results. And the definition of a result in Scientology is the product. We call it the product, not the result. We don't really use the word result. We use the word product. So you're going to get that product. You are going to get that product or you're in big trouble. Okay. So if a child or an adult says, holding the hands, fuck this. I don't want to do it anymore. You're making me uncomfortable. I don't want to do this. I want out of this room. Let me out. Let me out. Let me out. They'll hand cans right back. I don't care if you set them down. If you get up, they will get up and put you back in the chair. They're not going to let you out the door and they're going to go, I understand. We're going to continue with this process. I'll repeat the auditing command. It's complete robot. Here we go. Never let, never ever let a PC end session on his own determ determinism. That is a direct quote from LRH. They will get you through it even if they have to take you for a walk. You never, ever let a PC end the session. So I don't care if somebody has a freaking meltdown. I don't care if somebody has a panic attack. I don't care if somebody goes, help, help. I'm stuck in this room. Somebody help me. Understood. We're going to continue with this process. I'll repeat the auditing command. No emotion, guys. They're hardcore trained for this. Hours upon hours upon hours. That's why we do TRs and we do bull bait and we do all the stuff in, in TRs. Yes, Rain. So let's pretend we're doing a TR. Do birds fly? Sure. Good. Do birds fly? Got it. I'll repeat the auditing command. Do birds fly? I don't want to do this anymore. I understand. I'll repeat the auditing command. Do birds fly? I'm out of here. 
sit me back in the chair. They are trained to sit you back in the chair. Good, thank you. I'll repeat the auditing command. Do birds fly? All right, I'll repeat the auditing command. Do birds fly? We are getting the product. We don't care about your meltdown. We don't care about your fit. You know what that's called in Scientology? I'll give you a little word. Dramatization, you're dramatizing. That's all that is. That is the bank. That's the reactive mind talking. That is not the person. That's not the person. That's not the analytical mind is what we call it. That's the bank talking. That's the reactive mind. So me saying, we are, we encourage that. That's LRH saying that that's, that's stuff coming off. That's a good thing. That's their, that's getting, uh, they're blowing off charge. So they're, they're getting, they're getting their reactive mind kind of off, right? What? Do, can you do the litter box? Yeah. Thank you, son. So we're trained for your meltdown. Bring your meltdown. Bring every bit of your fit that you want to throw. We're going to cross the boundary and we're going to get to the other side of the product. Okay. No, I do not, Robin W. Um, so that's a little insight. That gives you a little insight. I wonder if anybody's going to watch this video because the entire first half was so silly. Um, but it is important and I probably should have skipped and done this first because it is something that I really do want to talk about. This is something Tommy and I over on our channel on the relate about are going to get way more into, um, what if you try to break out and run? Um, you can't, <laughs> they will stop you. Uh, more than one person will stop you. I've seen it happen actually. Um, there is a, uh, I'm trying to think of what is the drill. I was trained as an, an HCO, as an ethics officer. If somebody tried to leave, I think it's called you yell HCO assemble. And that is like red alert. And everybody is supposed to stop what they're doing and get the person and, and keep them from leaving. And somebody's supposed to go block the door. I mean, you don't get to leave. You don't get to leave. Uh, yeah, Bex, it is. Thank you, Original Ann. Um, so why do people seek auditing? Why are there non-Scientology auditors out there selling services? What do you mean? What do you mean by non-Scientology auditors? Tina, yes. Uh, it's crazy. Uh, <laughs> you got out of that hellhole. I was forced out in a great way. I couldn't be more happy, but yeah, I, I wouldn't have ever, I would have never left guys. I was happy to take that torture. I, I went in voluntarily to take it. Um, yes. You put that body back in that chair. That is a command as well. Put that body back in that chair. You're spoken to as an object. I mean, that is very common. How did auditors get chosen? Um, well, you just get trained. I mean, that's, that's the ultimate goal in Scientology is to become an auditor. Auditors are the most sane beings on planet Earth per LRH. How many of the auditors are actually children? Um, well, when I joined staff, my brother-in-law, Doug and Brenda's son, Sam Argus, uh, was two years. I think he's two years younger than me. So I was 14. He was 12. He was their top uh, making auditor on staff. Full time. He was in the HGC, the Hubbard Guidance Center, which is where you pay for the highest level of auditing, the highest price. It's a trained auditor. It's not co-auditing. It's not a student auditor. Sam Argus, who is 12 years old, was a full time auditor auditing all kinds of adults. So yeah, he was 12. And and Sam was no joke. He was uh he was a badass. That guy was like he was never a child. Sam was like super, super, super much an adult to me. I don't know anything about that. Uh, selling audit people who are ex-Scientologists selling auditing services. I don't know. I mean, I don't have any experience with it. Okay, Stephanie. So are there independent Scientologists who've left still running? I mean, yeah, I guess they got declared. And I did hear of an OT8 in Kansas City that got declared because he was running purists kind of on his own. But I mean, I don't know anything about it. I've not reached out to people like that. I don't know if they're delivering 
like an uh, off version of that or just like full on? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, it is, Bex. Isn't that terrifying? You can actually want to be in that environment or happy to go through the abuse. Love to everyone dealing with anything like this. It's just all you know. I don't know how else to describe it. I went, I happily went back all the time um, because that's what I knew and that's what I was told works and that's what I was told helps and that's what I was told um, were the few people who are the best of the best on planet Earth and everybody else that's not a Scientologist was not to be trusted and they're a bunch of dimwits and, you know, we're the best. There's nobody better. We're only bettering ourselves, right? No, Barefoot April, this was it. It's insane. Scientology is truly insane. I wanted to talk about that list. How does it not trigger the heck out of people? Because Debbie, Debbie, I can only speak for me. Okay. I can't speak for um, other Scientologists, other ex-Scientologists. I know for me, I didn't get triggered because I have been getting this list since I was little. So I was stripped of who I was at a very young age. I'm sure in the beginning, being asked those questions, I was probably like, oh, I don't like this. But eventually my opinions and my thoughts were gone. And I was just an empty behind the eyes person accepting what was asked of me. I just became a little empty soldier like everybody else and was told that, you know, this is how it goes and this is how your life's going to be. And um. Yeah, squirrel girl, for sure. But I only know my story, guys, and I really don't like to come out here. That's one thing about when I talk about Scientology, I hate to make it across the board because, like, for instance, Sterling had a totally different background in growing up in it. He had nice parents. His parents didn't make him do a lot either. So, I mean, I can't say, like, well, Aaron grew up this way and Liz Gale and Sterling. Guys, I only know my background. I can speak for what happened to me. Oh, yeah, Cinderella's last slipper. And saw two groups of free teen and teens going into Fort Harrison today on Lori Play's stream. Five or more in each group. It's horrifying. Yeah, there's a ton of kids in it, guys. Thank you for your super chat, Anne. There's a ton of kids in it. Um, totally, Amanda. Because they're like me, guys. There's a ton of rich-ass families. Thank you, Sassy. There's a ton of rich-ass families, public which means not Sea Org, not staff. They're just paying public, okay? There's a bunch of those people that have a bunch of kids and grandkids and, and they're paying for their services. There's a ton of kids in Scientology, tons of them. Look at Dan O'Connor's kids. I was down at the org a couple of weeks ago and I saw his daughter in the org. She's a year younger than Huxley, 13. I, uh, when I was friends with them, she had already done a Pura student hat. She was training to be an auditor. She was what, nine or 10 at the time. I mean, they set those kids up quickly and, and swiftly. And we got to make auditors out of these people. We want young, young, young auditors. We want to make them auditors while they're very young. Thank you, Shauna B. Well, Tim Harris, at least I'm out now. Yeah, Amanda makes a great point. It's illegal, but they don't deal with law enforcement. They deal with everything internally. And if questioned about it, they would lie. Um, they don't. And, and the other thing is they're also, uh, I believe, mandated reporters because they are ordained ministers. They don't report anything, guys. Come on. Like Amanda just said, they handle everything internally. There is no calling the police. No way. No way. Um, but yeah, there's, there's a ton of kids and I know this cause I was there. I, I could tell you, I could name off a ton of kids. I know right now that go to flag that go to, to different orgs. I mean, don't you guys remember the things I was doing with Aaron, that Scientology moms group? Come on guys. You remember all those kids. Remember that? Yeah, for sure. Uh-huh. We don't. Yeah. Mace Kingsley. There you go. Um, does seem like you'd have to have no boundaries as an honest, sensitive person to survive in a way. Yeah. I mean, we're very insensitive. We're desensitized and, um, it's not to be mean, but
but I can't tell you how many times when Tommy and I were first becoming friends that I would say something to him or he would say something to me and I wouldn't react or I'd react in a weird way. I could feel the judgment, not in a bad way, but like the, whoa, you got no response to that girl. Like, whoa, that's not normal. It wasn't him being mean. I think he was shocked. Like, I don't hang out with people like this. I don't realize the depths. But now I love him for this because he really gets me. He gets me better than I do. He really understands it now. He's put all the puzzle pieces together. And he's like, okay, this makes total sense why she is the way she is. And it helps me. He's helped my healing so much. Yeah, that's right, Amanda. Uh, why do you think it is or was important to those with the disposable income to participate in Scientology? Because it's an elite status thing. It's a status thing, Lori. Um, when you've got that income, you look like a real badass climbing up the bridge. You're OT8. Your kids just did superpower. Your kids are auditors. It's all a status thing. Yeah, Tampa A girl. Bye, Barbie. Thank you, Barbie. I don't know how to help to stop this. I don't know, West Coast Fancy Nancy. The, the only thing I know how to do is expose what I know on this channel. And I think that that helps. I don't know yet a plan of attack. I don't know what else we can do, guys. They are there on their own volition, a lot of them. Now, I'm not speaking about the kids, but I mean, my mother-in-law, Brenda, she is subjected to absolute torture, I guarantee you. She's scrubbing toilets probably as my mouth is moving. You can't go get her. If you sent a police officer in there, she'd be like, I'm here because I want to be here. There's nothing you can do about that. So all we can do is expose it to the public, expose it to the people under the radar, and expose it to the people who are maybe really are curious about Scientology. Um... Yeah, Barefoot April it was great. Um, oh, we all feel sad for Brenda. But the thing is, all we can do is expose this to people who want to know more about it. And hopefully they won't. Hopefully they won't. But I've got so much more. Um, yeah, Vanessa. I've got so much more of my, my Scientology books and works of L. Ron Hubbard that Tommy and I are going to do stuff on um, and break it down, talk about it, talk about the language, talk about how it goes, how it, you know, how it's done. Um, how do they consider it status when their kids aren't even educated? Zelda, because they don't believe in education in the real world. They will tell you. I have been told so many times, like college is not important. Real school is not important. Having your kid on course around the clock, studying the works of L. Ron Hubbard, teaching that child study tech, teaching that child how to communicate, teaching that child how to become an auditor is a hundred thousand times more important. And that kid's going to grow up in clear planet earth. Now, does school seem important anymore after what I just told you? Of course not. Sign my kid up to go study L. Ron Hubbard because he's going to save planet earth. That's how they design it. That's how they, that's how they dangle it to you. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's a real thing. No, I really don't believe existing members will even watch listener care guys. I was an existing member for a long time. Do you know how many people stood outside the org every day that I was on course with signs protesting. This is not a new thing. Okay. 20 years ago, I would walk to lunch to get something on my break. And there would be people standing out with signs going, it's a cult. It's a cult. I didn't give two shits about that. I never cared. I walked by him and I was like, sure it is. And I'm thinking in my head, thank God I'm being saved by this religion. Thank God. I know the truth. Thank God. I'm better than these people. Thank God. That's what went through my mind. You're not going to help the people in it. They're way, way too brainwashed. I never had a desire for elite status, Lori. That's why I never made it up the bridge. I never made it to clear. I never made it to the OT levels. I don't give a shit about elite status and I never have. I don't, I am not money motivated. I'm not, um, it, it just isn't a turn on for me. It never was a carrot dangling for me. That's why I never did superpower. I never went to flag and did all this stuff. 
I never cared to get to that level. I never cared to get to that status. And whenever somebody would dick swing and go, I'm OT8. I know this person and that person. And I've done this, this, and this. And I did the L's and I did cause resurgence and my kids are on superpower. I'd be like, I didn't care. It totally didn't matter to me. The status thing was such a turnoff and it still is. I don't like people who are that way. Um, yeah, Tampa, a girl. Yeah. I just never. And that's how I am in real life. I don't like people who are like, Oh my God, here's my Louis Vuitton bag. And, um, I have this, you know, I have all these status symbols and I want you to know I have a lot of money and I want you to know who I am. I can't stand that, that kind of shit. It's such a turnoff to me. I don't like it. I don't like it. I really don't. So I haven't changed much there. Scientology is a giant cesspool of people going, I'm OT8. My husband's on seven. My kids are trained auditors. Um, you remember that Scientology moms group? Do you guys remember that? All the moms that Aaron and I went down the list with, they were like, so I'm on seven. My husband just attested to eight. Uh, my daughter just got invited to the OT levels. That's all it was. It was just a big dick swinging fest of eliteness. That's all it is, guys. It's, it's, it's smoke and mirrors. Yeah. Yeah, it's terrible. It's gross. You're welcome, squirrel girl. I'm going to be doing more Scientology lives. I think I'm ready to talk about it. I'm ready to deal with it. I just don't want to do it every day. I'll probably do it a couple times a week. And then I want to keep it light again because it's just, it gets heavy for me and I'm just going to do what I can do. So just know that too, before anybody goes, Reese, don't force yourself or don't, I'm not, I'm going to do it when I feel like doing it and when it's comfortable for me and I can talk about it because it's a lot to tackle.